Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and kind of run you guys down a new character that I want to play. Uh, yes, I am getting a little bored with Low Life Righteous Fire, but mainly it's not the Low Life Righteous Fire. It's that I've pretty much done uh, everything in this current league. Uh, I'm not 40 of 40 challenges, but I am 36 of 40 challenges. Uh, and I'll probably make another video here probably tomorrow covering, you know, what I did for my challenges uh, for people who kind of want to follow along. I could hit 40 of 40 pretty easily, um, like complete maps with 8 mods. This is very easy to do. That's just like, you know, one knocked off, uh, do 100 more maps. Uh, the end game grinds I'm like 30% complete with almost. Um, and then the last one is just about Paranda's Trove. So we'll see whether or not I care enough to do that. Because the, the beta, I'm sure, is coming up soon. So I'm not really too focused on that. But I wanted to play around a skill um, since we are, you know... I guess I've really always wanted to play Vortex. But Vortex was flavor of the month for a while. Um, not in this league, but in previous leagues. And I kind of stay away from that because it's... I don't know, it's just not as fun for me to play something that everybody is playing, right? And then on top of that, uh, I believe... Actually, can I save two points here? If I disconnect one point here, can I just, like, drop, like, one, two, three? One, two, three. Hold on. One, two, three. Look at that. Okay. So, anyway, like I was saying, uh, I might have to respect that after... I always wanted to play Vortex, and I never really understood how to build it. You know how there's always, like, these niche skills with their own mechanics, and they just don't make any fucking sense? Well, that's kind of what Vortex is, Kappa. No, not really. But, like, Vortex is a little different than most skills, so let's pull it up and actually look at it. I actually don't even know if this is gonna pull up, because whenever I look at it, it pulls up the Vertex. Oh, no, maybe I've just been typing Vertex. So, Vortex is a spell... Um, that's tagged as AoE cold and duration. Now, previously what players did before is they would use an item called a Pyre, and Pyre Ring would convert 100% of the cold damage to fire. What that means is when they would use their Vortex, it would be initially fire, which would trigger elemental equilibrium, which you guys can see here. It says enemies you hit with elemental uh, damage temporarily get 25% resistance to those elements and minus 50% resistance to other elements. So what that would basically do is since damage over time cannot be converted, such as, you know, Righteous Fire, um, Essence Drain, um, Ignites, Ignites can't be converted, it basically just amplifies the damage over time by like a huge margin, um, which was pretty cool. So I need to figure out 100% exactly how Elemental Equilibrium works, because if it works the way I think it works, and there's like a little delay for like five or six seconds, then I can proc elemental equilibrium with my shield charge, uh, and then I can just uh, essentially use vortex, which would get the huge increase to damage if I have like, you know, flat fire or flat lightning. So I decided that I'm either gonna play it as, I don't really know 100% sure, I wanna say a shadow. And the reason why I'm leaning towards shadow is because with shadow, I can go trickster. And I haven't actually found a good reason to play a Trickster, because usually I just play an Occultist instead of a Trickster, but we're not playing anything Chaos-themed. So with Trickster, our baby nodes would give us Evasion, ES, Attack, and Cast Speed. Every single thing on there is good. Evasion's going to be for scaling Grace, if we can get Grace going. Max ES, because we're going to have to go CI. Uh, increased Attack Speed is going to be for Shield Charge. And Casting Speed would simply be for your actual cast of Vortex. So, Ghost Dance would give us 20% faster start of Shield Recharge. It's not necessarily bad. I don't really see it as a, anything crazy, but it's not bad to have. You know, it just makes it come back quicker. Free Dodge, Free Spell Dodge, and Increased Movement Speed while on Full Energy Shield. The Full Energy Shield thing is going to be pretty cool since we're not running Blood Rage. Uh, next up, we have Attack and Cast Speed here, which is the exact same thing as the Minor Node. And then the Big Node, Shade Form, which gives 500 Flat Evasion, which will scale off of all of our... Um, evasion percentage on the tree along with uh, 250 flat energy shield which will be very nice because that's basically like an extra pair of shitty gloves or actually decent rolled gloves these days 20% attack and cast speed if energy shield uh, recharge has started recently so that's not bad either that's basically just saying um, if within four seconds your ES recharge has started here's an attack speed steroid um, and then same thing with cast speed. 20% more chance to evade attacks while not on full energy shield. This isn't necessarily bad because this basically just means, you know, when you when you take damage, like if you're in breaches and stuff, you have a constant, like an extra little buffer 
of evasion. Not towards spells, just attacks. Um, but I think that's still pretty good. And then we've got <clears throat> Patient Reaper, which gives us upwards of, what, 70% increased damage over time. Uh, and this is really good because this affects... This affects our... This is actually the mechanic we were talking about before with the Beast for Shawl. I believe that's not how it's pronounced instead of a Shawl, as you guys seen a little PJ Salt in the previous videos. But, um... Yeah, Patient Reaper is going to be nice because it's going to scale this 3.7% life regen uh, upwards of what? Maybe like, I don't know, 5.5, almost 6, not almost 6%, maybe like 5.5, .5, somewhere around there. I don't know, math is difficult for me. Um, so this is going to be pretty cool because that's going to be a constant, probably like 500 plus ES regen a second. Uh, and since we are playing a skill that doesn't really have a good leech component unless we scale the initial hit, I think that going the regeneration route is going to be fun. Plus, I've liked it with my Righteous Fire character quite a bit. And then last but not least, we've got Frenzy Charges on Swift Killer. And since this character is going to be made for mapping, I think Swift Killer is pretty reliable. 15% chance to gain a Frenzy Charge on kill. Remember that Frenzy Charges also give us a multiplier uh, if you look at it inside here. Um, frenzy charges give us 4% attack speed, 4% cast speed, and 4% more damage. Note that the more damage will affect the damage over time part of Vortex, and we can easily pick up 5 frenzy charges because we get 3 from base, 1 from Creighton and Merciless, and then 1 from the Trickster Passive Tree. And I may see if I can pick up this frenzy charge here, but as of right now, that's not really what we're going with. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the character. I don't really know how it's going to turn out. I'll probably jump right onto this. I still will probably play my Low Life Righteous Fire a bit since they did fix the double beyond. And uh, that's always fun to mess around in. Um, yeah, but I mean, the character looks pretty solid so far. I mean, it's got a 292% ES with a 61% ES from Intelligence. So that's pretty crazy. Um, my only concern is I'm not going to have enough damage, that's always the concern. So I may have to reroute this tree, because ideally what I want to do is if I pull up the aura calculator here, I've got 16% reservation on my tree that I'm able to pick up, which is basically just grabbing Charisma and the little pooper right here. Now what this opens me up for availability is basically a Blasphemy which this Blasphemy would be Frostbite and or Elemental Weakness, and then I would like to run Discipline and Grace, and then I would like to run a uh, Witchfire Brew to get Vulnerability, because at one, that's a huge increase to damage, and that will scale off of my Alchemist Wheel. Furthermore, I would like to run a Sulfur Flask, which is probably going to be a Sorrow of the Divine, because that's going to give me free Zealot's Oath without actually needing Zealot's Oath. Now, some things that kind of go up and down with this, um, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to probably respec, like, I don't know, part of the points here, and come across to grab Sovereignty, um, because I feel like I am going to need quite a bit of mana, because I think Vortex costs quite a bit, and then I can get my Double Curse up here as well. So this, I'm still trying to figure out the, um, the proper, I guess, like, I don't know, pathing to get everything up here. But I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, the other thing to take note of is since we are not playing like a Pathfinder or something else, um, ideally I would need four immunity flasks, right? We would need immunity to bleed, immunity to freeze, curse immune, immunity to shock. So that's four. And by running two unique flasks, like a Sorrow of the Divine and a Witch Fire Brew, I can't do that unless I get boots called Death Store. But those are like 300 chaos, so we're going to kind of skip out on that. In terms of our chess piece option, which is probably going to be the most important, it's going to be a Skin of the Loyal. Uh, Skin of the Loyal is a pretty cool piece. Uh, let me pull it up for you guys here. Skin of the Loyal. As you can see here, um, it has 100% increased global defenses, which basically means that instead of getting energy shield on your chess piece, you need to get it everywhere else. Uh, I do believe... I don't know actually if this is scaled off of auras, it says global defenses, so I actually have no clue how that works, because uh, I don't think auras are tagged as defenses, but if you guys know in the comments, feel free to hit me up. But this will scale like your uh, shield and your helmet, your boots and your gloves, mainly your shield and your helmet, because those are like the 500, well helmet probably more realistically, like 400 ES, uh, shields could easily be over 500 ES, uh, and this is like pretty crazy because it ends up scaling the effect to make it mirror um, essentially like a 7 to 900 ES regalia while having a 6 link and the plus 1 to gems and remember this is something you most likely want to scale with empower so plus the gems is going to be extremely beneficial for our build 
Anyway, that's pretty much about it. This is kind of just like a little theory crafting thing. I haven't actually made the character yet. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys should, you know, definitely check it out as well. I'll probably be playing it for the past couple days uh, or the next couple days. And then I'll see about streaming something else while we wait for the beta. That hasn't been decided yet either, but it may be a pool between like... Uh, potentially Grim Dawn, but I think I'll be waiting for the expansion first. Uh, Diablo 2 LOD, um, which would be on the Path of Diablo servers, or maybe even some Hero Siege as well. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it for the video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. Hope you boys enjoyed yourself. And remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And you can catch me streaming live on twitch.tv slash pox pretty much every day. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.